Almost everything that we will deal with in our linear algebra class is a set. So I think we need to take a few minutes to review the concepts and notation related to sets. So a set is simply an unordered collection of objects. The objects are called elements. So unordered, of course, means that if you change the order, you still have the same set. The way we write down a set depends on how many elements we have. If we only have a small number of elements, then we may list them out using what's called roster notation, but we enclose that list in brackets. And again, there's no special order. We do not have to write the smallest number first and the largest number last. We can write them in any order. So here are two sets of counting numbers. I did happen to write them in ascending order, but that's not necessary. The special set that we're going to be using or thinking about is the empty set. It's a set that has no elements at all. And we write that as either open bracket, nothing, close bracket, or we use this symbol, which is a circle or an oval that has a line going from the lower left to the upper right. Another important idea is a subset. We say that S is a subset of A, provided that every element of S is also an element of a. And the notation that we use here is this kind of sideways U. Uh, you can think of it as being a mouth. The mouth always opens towards the larger set. So uh, S we think of normally as being smaller than A, having a smaller number of elements. But S could be the exact same set as A. And that's why we have this little line that reminds us of an equal sign. We may also say that A is a superset of S or a parent set of S and we could write it as A and now the U points towards A or the mouth opens up towards A and then S. Uh, by default we say that the empty set is a subset of any set. So let's just look at an example. We have the same set A with uh, elements 2, 3, 5, 7, and 11. Those are the first five prime numbers. And then we have uh, several smaller sets. And we have S has elements 3, 7, and T only has one element, 7. And U has the elements 3, 4, and 5. Uh, so set S is a subset of A, set T is a subset of S, and so it's also a subset of A, but U is not a subset of any of the other sets. It's not a subset of A uh, because it has the element 4, which does not belong to A. Uh, another special case, in addition to the empty set as always being a subset, you can always say that the set is a subset of itself. And in that case, we really do need this lower part referring to the equals to. Sometimes we read this as S is contained in A. Uh, rather than saying S is a subset of A. Now, if you only have a few elements in common, so if not all the elements of one set belong to the other set, we can still talk about the intersection of two sets. The intersection are those elements which belong to both sets. And the notation is this upside down U which is also called a cap. Uh, but we just write this as A intersection B. The key word that we think about uh, when we're studying 
sets or the intersection of sets. So we really think of the word and because the elements in the intersection must be in A and also in B. So let's look at some uh, sets again. Here I have an, the same set A. V is going to have the elements 2, 4, and 6. W has 4, 6, 8, and 10. So if I want to look at A intersection V, or the intersection of A and V, what's the what do they have in common? The only thing they have in common is 2. What about V and W? They have 4 and 6 in common, but A and W have no elements in common, so their intersection is the empty set. Another operation that we don't use so much in linear algebra is union, and the idea of the union is you take all of A and then anything else that's in B that's not in A. In other words, any element that belongs to either one. And so the key word that we think of here is or. An element will belong to the union of A and B if it is in A or in B or in both. So again, we'll go back to our same A, V, and W. So for A union V, we're going to start with all of A. And then what uh, do we have in V that's not in A? Well, we don't have a 4 and we don't have a 6. So we're going to include everything from A and then the 4 and the 6. We don't write the 2 twice. It's already there, so we don't write it again. And then for V uh, union W, uh, it is uh, all of V, and then what else do we get from W? Uh, we get an 8 and a 10. So we've got 2, 4, 6, and then 8, 10. And again, I don't write any of the ones that are in common. I don't write two fours, and I don't write two sixes. I just write them once. And that's just this note here. When we list elements that appear in both, we only list them once. All right. So uh, the symbol for all the counting numbers, counting numbers are the numbers that were starting with 1, 2, 3. Those are whole numbers starting with 1. It is this uh, bold stylized N. The uh, symbol for the set of integers is the stylized Z. Z from the German word for numbers, is, which is Zahlen. And then the uh, symbol for the rational numbers is a stylized Q. The Q should remind us of quotient, because the definition of a rational number is a number that you can write as P over Q, where both P and Q are integers. And then the symbol for all real numbers is just this stylized R. And note that uh, N is a proper subset. So proper subset means that uh, it is not the same as uh, the integers. N is a proper subset of the integers. The integers are a proper subset of the rational numbers. And the rational numbers are a proper subset of the real numbers. And I had already used this symbol. It kind of looks like an E or an epsilon or a fork without a handle uh, to indicate that an object belongs to a set. So if I were to write N and then that symbol Z, uh, that means that N belongs to the set Z, or N is in Z. But we know that Z is the set of integers, so we may say it better by saying N belongs to the set of integer, or simply N is an integer. Now, if we have an infinite number of elements, or maybe even a large number of elements, uh, instead of trying to write them all out, 
we'd like to give a description. And we use set builder notation to write down that description. So here's an example. We know the multiples of 5. Um, that would be an infinite number of elements. So what we'll do is we'll start off with braces. We're still using braces in set builder notation. But the first part is going to tell us what type of objects are in the set. And so we're going to take all the counting numbers. So the count, what, what is in the set S? They are all counting numbers. Then we have this bar or pipe, and that is read as such that. So it's just shorthand for such that. And then we have the description. The description could be a sentence or phrase like we have here, or it could be an algebraic equation, or some other way of describing the elements of the set. So here's another example of set builder notation. Uh, it's telling us that the elements are going to belong to the rational numbers, and they must be zeros of this polynomial. So that gives us a good chance to review what is the zero of a polynomial. Well, those are the uh, values of x, which make the value of the polynomial equal to zero. So in other words, the rational t consists of all rational solutions to the polynomial equation x cubed minus x squared minus 6x plus 6 equals zero or that's p of x equals to 0. Here's another example of set builder notation. Now, instead of using words, we're going to actually have an inequality describe it. And this is why we have to include, or certainly it's very helpful to include, uh, a description of the type of elements in the set. So in the set U, the elements are real numbers. So X, I mean, sorry, U actually is a subset of the real line. It's an interval starting at positive 2 and going to infinity. Now I can use that same inequality for a completely different type of set. In this type, case, I have V, and I'm missing an equal sign. Forgive me that v should equal the set uh, whose elements are ordered pairs. So they're ordered pairs. Uh, they belong to R2. And we have no restriction on y, but the restriction on x is that x has to be greater than or equal to 2. Uh, and if you remember a little bit about uh, algebra, that set is actually a half plane in the xy plane. So it would be, so I draw its boundary, Oops. I can draw that as a straight line. Its boundary would be the vertical line x equals 2. And then it's going to be all points uh, to the right of that boundary line. So we would have, indicate that with some shading there, be this whole region which is including the boundary line and everything, all of the points, all the ordered pairs to the right of it. Now, notice, even though we use the same description, um, that U ha contains completely different objects from V. U contains just simply real numbers or scalars, 
and um, v contains ordered pairs. So there's no way that u can be a subset of v. So this can be really confusing, particularly when we think back to this picture here. We think of, oh, the x-axis as being the same thing as the real line. And in many ways, it's related to it, but uh, when we're looking at this set R2, ordered pairs, when we're looking at ordered pairs, then um, ordered pairs are different from just simply single numbers. So there's the emphasis. U cannot be a subset of V. So I hope that this review of sets uh, will be useful for you throughout the rest of the course.